Hello folks, Jason Crossman here at JC's Bees. Today we're pushing about 65, 68 degrees. It's April 11th and I'm anxious to check my strongest colony here at the house. So I figured I would go in, do an inspection, just kind of see how much brood they've got, see how food stores are looking, and uh, that sort of thing. So if you want to follow along, check this out. Okay folks, so I've already removed two frames from this box. They're sitting down here on the ground. They were the first two frames on this side. So this would be the third frame, the fourth frame, which is where I started to find a little bit of brood. A little bit, not a whole lot, just a little bit. It's when we get to the fourth frame that I'm really impressed. You see, because this whole frame from one end to the other is covered in brood. If you take and try and sweep the bees away, you can see the brood there. Oh, nice cap brood. We'll look at the other side. Same exact thing. Whole frame of brood. No sign of the queen. But that's pretty common because this frame is completely capped. I look to find the queen on something with some open cells. Let's pull the next frame out and see what it looks like. Them bees to move out of the way. At the same time, I'm trying to stay out of your way so you can see what's going on. So, another full frame of cap brood. There's some open cells. These ones down here are all cap. Check the other side, completely capped. This is the second week in April, folks. This will be my first inspection of the year. So this would be frame number seven. And we've got a lot of drone brood. You can see these ones here. These are all drones. These ones are drones because they got little, they're bubbled outward and not flat. Got a little tiny bit of worker brood here. Now we'll flip it over and look on the other side. And that's pretty much all open. I don't even see any eggs in there. Continuing on down the line. Very heavy frame, so I'm going to say it's honey. And it is. It's all still capped. Same with the next frame. It's capped honey. So I'm going to put the rest of these frames back in their original position. Um, at this early stage in the year, I don't want to go mixing frames around. The bees have them right where they know where everything is, and I want to try and keep it that way. Would still like to get a glimpse of my queen, but that may not happen. She's obviously there with all that brood. She's obviously doing very well. I, another thing I'm noticing is I don't see any signs of uh, nosema. Um, that's a gut disease. It's usually uh, shown this time of year. You'll have a bunch of fecal matter covering the front of your hive. If you see that, you need to treat for that. 
Um, it can kind of work itself out, but it can take its time and it could be midsummer before it works itself out. And if you wait till that long, the colony could dwindle down to nothing. Another look for the queen. I don't see her there. I don't see her there, but there again, these frames are capped. So now this next frame should be open, or the drone brood. So hopefully we'll find her on here. Yeah, that's, that's worker brood. That's worker brood. And that's honey. So I either missed the queen or she's raising moved down and started raising brood and i'm kind of anxious to get down in there and look so i'll put all this back together and we'll take this top box off and this top medium box and go down into the first deep here's one of the frames that i removed that you didn't get to see capped honey And this is my microphone that I'm going to have to move. And this one's got a little bit of honey on it. I think I'll put the side with the most honey towards the bees. As you can see, off to the front of the hive is my outer cover. I've got it upside down and what I'll do now is smoke these bees here on this medium, move the medium off and set it on that outer cover. And by straddling across the outer cover, I'll keep from squishing any bees. Okay, so now we're down to the deep. Now move my microphone back out here so you can hear me better. And I'm gonna guess right about the middle of the box is where we wanna be. So I'm gonna start over here. I see a frame that hasn't been drawn out, so that looks like a good place to uh, start pulling frames. Let me get these bees out of here so I don't squish any. They've got it glued in there like they don't ever want it to come out. Basically what I'm going to do instead of pulling frames, is I'm going to slide them over until I see signs of uh, brood. See a lot of drones running around. I'm very glad to see that. If the weather would cooperate, we'd be able to start the queen op uh, rearing operation. But the cold weather keeps interfering with that. Okay, we've got... Uh, some pollen. Now, if they're storing pollen down here, I would imagine they're raising brood. And they are. It's the next frame over. You need pollen to raise brood. That's the protein. 
So they try to keep the protein source really close to the brood. This frame is freshly laid out. This frame I can see larva in the cell. So we know three, four, five days ago, uh, I can see some older larva. So at least six, seven days ago, the queen was here and laid. It's a booming colony. I will give them that. Next frame, brood, maybe even a queen. Look at that, folks. April 11th, and I'm on my second box of brood. Some amazing what a healthy colony of bees can do. No queen. Go to the next one. Okay, so we've got some honey stores here on the right hand side. Don't, yes I do see eggs. Right in here. There we've got some older brood. So I would say she laid this out a few days ago. Next frame. You kind of take your time when you're pulling these frames. You don't want to do what's called rolling the queen and that's basically having the frames too close together while you remove a frame. And uh, can do bodily in in that can do bodily injury to her harm her very badly heavy frame heavy frames are honey and that's just what we've got here I don't see any eggs. So this is just a honey frame. And the same with the next frame. So I never found the queen. I'm not going to worry too much about that. We obviously know the queen is doing fine. Unless I did something stupid here today and harmed her. But I've tried my best to avoid that. And now I'm going to do my best to slide these frames back over a little bit so I can put the other two back in right where they were, or the other one. Keeping them frames tight together. You know, last year I made the mistake, about this time of year, I had a box. But the last frame was just a nightmare to get in. So I ended up thinking to myself, you know... I'm going to not put this in, later I'll come back and switch out the box and give them a box that's actually a little bit bigger and allows for that last frame to fit. Well you know what happened? Time went by, old Jason forgot about it. About a month later I was doing inspections and 
I go to pull one box off of the next box and it will not come off of there. I'm a tugging, I'm a prying. It does not want to move. You know what the problem was? Where I didn't put the last frame in, the bees noticed the extra space and they drew comb in there. Where did they attach the comb? To the box above it. It was a complete nightmare, folks. So, if you ever do something like I did and say, well, I'll come back in a few days and fix that, you've got to go back in a few days. Bees will take that little bit of space, put comb in there, and you'll have to cut it all out, and it's not real easy. Okay, so I'm going to move my microphone again. I'm going to smoke these bees so they move down in, and I'm going to put the medium back on top. As I was placing that back on there, I got stung on the arm. But you can see here, I'm blowing smoke on it. What that's going to do is cover that alarm pheromone so no other bees are drawn to me. Now I'm going to smoke this down. I'm going to put this dry sugar back on it. Do they need it? Probably not. Not with all them food stores. But I'll give it to them. Let them clean it up. Take care of business. Now my particular setup here, I got a slatted rack that I put on top and that allows room for the SERP. So what'd you think folks? I know personally I was very, very impressed with how much brood was in that hive. I wasn't expecting that. It is a good thing though because you know once the weather starts to cooperate I'll be making splits so I'll be taking either one or two frames of brood and uh, making a split. So the more brood I have the more splits I can make. Very glad to see all the brood. Um, if you have any questions or comments about the way I did something or maybe you just have your own question leave that down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer that. And if I'm not able to answer that, I've got some pretty smart followers, and I'm sure they can direct you in the right direction. One thing I'd like to mention um, is to make my operation of doing videos more sustainable and, uh, for me, um, I took the opportunity and became affiliated with a couple different places, one of them being Amazon. Um, the Amazon, I created a beekeeping store, and uh, you'll find that down in the description. I've also became affiliated with Bly the Wood Beekeeping Supply. If you're not a fan of uh, Amazon, and I know there's a lot of people out there that aren't, um, check out Bly the Wood if you'd like to help support me. Um, the prices that you're going to pay for any of the products isn't any higher. My uh, kickback comes from the retailer side. So if you like what I do, you'd like to see more of them keep coming, check out these links, people. It would really help me. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, throw me a thumbs up. That'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed, please do that down below and make sure you click on the bell. That way you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching, folks.